So that's the MQ family of gas sensors. And you'll find that a lot of guys uh, play with these in Arduino type projects. Uh, that's not my game. I uh, try to see if these have any potential for automotive diagnostics, if I can make gadgets out of them. And I'm mostly going towards uh, combining them with oscilloscope use. So I got a bag full of these, like an assortment, right? And uh, data sheets are okay, but nothing beats hands-on testing. And in there, I was looking for the right sensor within that family um, that would uh, be good for the target uh, gases I have in mind, like gasoline, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. So all of these have like a small built-in heater circuit inside of them. Uh, but some of them have like a dual voltage uh, thing going on. And uh, that kind of disqualifies them from my search. Some of the other ones uh, target different gases than the ones I've just mentioned. And that leaves one clear winner, the MQ-2. So it responds very well to the three mentioned gases, gasoline, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. But just as importantly, once removed from these uh, gases, from the exposure to them, it recovers back to baseline very, very quickly. Now these boards have a few quirks that I want to go over with you. What I'm actually doing here is paving the way for the next video where I'm going to be featuring a brand new gadget based on the MQ-2. So that small potentiometer is often referred to as a sensitivity adjustment. Uh, man, that, that's misleading. Okay, so think of it more as a threshold adjustment on the digital output pin that's either on or off or that small LED on the board that's either on or off once a certain threshold has been attained. It's like an alarm thing, okay? So um, it doesn't make it more sensitive to like so many parts per million or, or uh, that it can better detect on the analog side of things, which is the side that I use. I, I don't use the digital pin in my gadgets. As I mentioned, there's a small heater element inside of these sensors. Uh, you have to give it a little bit of time so that it can uh, bring the uh, sensor to its temperature, a working temperature, and then you're able to start taking measurements with it. If you look at the data sheet, they uh, sometimes tell you that like uh, it's 24 hours. Um, that's ridiculous. I mean, uh, that would be impractical, uh, nor is it necessary. Uh, depending on how long it hasn't been used, it can take like maybe uh, five minutes to uh, get to a, a baseline where it's ready to take measurements uh, and as little as uh, less than two minutes to do so. So. I've got it set up here so I can do a little bit of bench testing and I'll show you what it is that I'm talking about here. So watch the voltage at the top of the screen here. Okay, I'm going to power up the MQ-2. Okay, so watch it like rise, okay? But then uh, watch it as it, it's coming down, okay? So now that heater is working its magic and it is uh, increasing the resistance uh, within the MQ-2 and we're getting on the signal, we're getting a lower voltage output, okay? So at some point, uh, this thing will stabilize, all right? So um, I'm going to let it do its thing and I'll give you an idea, I'll come back, give you an idea of just how long it took, at what voltage it did stabilize, how long it took to do so, all right? So after about four minutes, it settled down at, what, 928 millivolts. Like those last few little millivolts, like they, they don't prevent us from being able to use these things. Like it's, it's ready to take a measurement from here. Now, is there a magic number at which uh, these things all come to a rest um, in millivolts. Um, that's where there's a small fly in the ointment 
and brings us to the next topic. Now that's just a Google image I got off the internet, right? Let's zoom in here. So you see that uh, center resistor, that's a load resistor. You see that it says 102 on there, you can kind of make it out. Okay, so that in the three number system of SMD resistors, 102 means one kilo ohm. Okay, and um, I've had some of these ship with that 102 resistor in that position. But the fly in the ointment that I was mentioning is that some of them come like they're all over the map. I've had 2 kilo ohm, 18 kilo ohm, a friend reported 36 kilo ohm in that position. And it makes a difference. So this guy here that we just finished bench testing, all right, and that settled around 928 millivolt after its warm up, um, it shipped with a 183 SMD resistor in that middle position. Okay. Um, 183 is 18 kilo ohm. My projects are based on 1 kilo ohm being in that center position. So if they ship otherwise, what I do is I remove them and I put a 102 SMD resistor, which is one kilo ohm. Also, in the in the four number position system, you could have one zero zero one, and that is also one kilo ohm. So there are a lot of ways to skin that cat. We could use a hot air rework station, right, to remove it and to solder a new one in its position. I like the idea of a broad enough tip on the soldering iron that can straddle both of these contacts at the same time. And just pull it off. And I always have a bunch of 1 kilo ohm 102 SMD resistors on hand. So I'm just going to put one of those in its place. And then we're going to do another bench test. I'm going to power the MQ-2. Again, keep an eye on the top. Uh, watch that voltage climb and settle down. I think the first thing you'll notice that it doesn't go out and peak and go over scale uh, like uh, it did the first time when it had that 18 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, now it's back on its way down, settling down. We'll give it a couple minutes and we'll see what that level is when it settles down with this one kilo ohm resistor on board. You notice that we're down quite a bit, you know, like we're down. 900 millivolts from where we were before almost a full volt difference between a board that has an 18 kilo ohm and now this board that has one kilo ohm the desired one kilo ohm after about two minutes we're going to call it 80 millivolts something like that it's stabilized here ready to measure The HCO probe database has the MQ-2 probe in it. It's in the other category. You see where MQ-2, let's download it. The offset that's there is like a starter base and by default all of the probes in the HCO database has that auto offset switch off. For the MQ-2 use you want to turn that on, right? So, auto on. Don't forget to save that setting so that it clicks in there. Now, if you notice we're in volts, we're using that one time probe. Let's go with MQ 2. Do you see how it does that automatic zero calibration, that uh, H scope probe, right? So, we're starting off with 0% at that. 80 millivolt voltage and we have the sensor here exposed to clean air so that's why we have zero percent and in the presence of hydrocarbon it climbs up there and just as importantly once removed 
from the source, it recovers quite readily. That's kind of nice. So apparently these are good like for about 10 years. I've had them for four or five. They're still going strong. Um, try to avoid exposing them to high levels of these gases, right, for extended periods of time. And they should do just fine. So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover in this video uh, in preparation for um, featuring the latest gadget. It's called MQ-2 Stick. All right. Next video. See you there.